thank you, everybody. Our Spartan community is reeling today. I want to start by thanking law enforcement, including the Michigan State University Police, the Michigan State Police, the FBI, all of our local agencies, first responders, local departments, and officers as far away as Oakland County for their efforts last night. I also want to thank the incredible medical professionals at Sparrow who are working hard to care for those injured, as well as all the community members that shared tips so that um, our law enforcement could act. We mourn the loss of beautiful souls today and pray for those who are continuing to fight for their lives. Every Spartan student, parent, and staff member should know that Michiganders and Americans everywhere are thinking of you today. President Biden and I spoke last night. He pledged his support and the thoughts of an entire nation. And we will work together to do what is necessary to help MSU community heal. We're all broken by an all too familiar feeling. Another place that is supposed to be about community and togetherness shattered by bullets and bloodshed. We know this is a uniquely American problem. Today is the fifth anniversary of the Parkland shooting. We're mere weeks past the Lunar New Year shooting at a dance hall, and a few months past the shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde. And looking back at a year marked by shootings at grocery stores, parades, and so many other ordinary, everyday situations, we cannot keep living like this. Our children are scared to go to school. People feel unsafe in their houses of worship or local stores. Too many of us scan rooms for exits when we enter them. And many of us have gone through the grim exercise of figuring out who our last call would be to. Last night, a lot of kids on this campus made those calls. They worried for their lives and for their friends, for their fellow Spartans. Parents across Michigan were on pins and needles, calling their kids to tell them that they love them. As parents, we tell our kids, it's going to be OK. We say that all the time. But the truth is, words are not good enough. We must act, and we will. And today, let's hold the MSU and East Lansing communities close. And let's think of the families and friends of those who have lost those fighting for their lives, and the countless Michiganders whose lives are forever changed by yesterday's shooting. We will get through this together, and we will do it with the full support of the state of Michigan and the U.S. federal government. And with that, I would like to hand this over to our Congresswoman Melissa Slotkin. Thanks, Governor. Um, I want to echo what the governor said about the response of law enforcement. Uh, those of you who might have been listening on the scanner, <clears throat> you heard how deeply complex this operation was yesterday, with young people calling in tips constantly, with a, a just a, an unbelievable, unbelievably difficult area of environment to navigate. Uh, law enforcement did an incredible job. We had hundreds respond from across the state. Um, and I just, I think it's a testament um, to those who hold the thin blue line for us, the ones that hesitate or do not hesitate um, when we need them. Um, and I think we should recognize how desperately needed they were last night um, in our society in general. Um, I want to thank the doctors and nurses and staff at Sparrow Hospital. They were on it. Um, no one wants to live through a mass shooting like this, but they were prepared and they handled it with grace and humanity. Um, as the representative of Oxford, Michigan, I cannot believe that I am here again doing this 15 months later. And I am filled with rage that we have to have another press conference to talk about our children being killed in their schools. And I would say that you either care about protecting kids or you don't. You either care about having an open, honest conversation about what is going on in our society or you don't. But please don't tell me you care about the safety of children if you're not willing to have a conversation about keeping them safe in a place that should be a sanctuary. Now, the Spartan community is incredibly uh, connected and proud. We've already seen people come together. 
But for me, the most haunting picture of last night was watching the cameras pan through the crowds and seeing a young person wearing an Oxford Strong sweatshirt. The sweatshirts that were handed out after those kids lived through a school shooting 15 months ago. And we have children in Michigan who are living through their second school shooting in under a year and a half. If this is not a wake up call to do something, I don't know what is. In the meantime, I feel confident that our law enforcement is doing everything that they can to understand the situation. I'm thrilled that federal law enforcement is on scene bringing their resources to the fight. <clears throat> we're not gonna rest until we understand, but I, I think the fact that we're having this conference so quickly after another mass shooting in our state should be a statement in and of itself. Thanks very much. Well, on behalf of the, the community, uh, I'm Mayor Andy Shore. Uh, Mayor Ron Bacon, East Lansing. Uh, City of Lansing. Uh, this, is the, this is the morning that nobody ever wants to have. This is the day that nobody ever wants to be standing up at a lectern. When you get elected, you want to talk about the great things in your community and not this. Um, but here we are. Um, I, I do want to thank the, the Lansing residents who, who stood up these many, many tips you've heard about came in from, from many of our residents, and as a result, the, the shooter was identified and, um, and the threat was neutralized. So we are very proud of our citizens in Lansing. Um, there's gonna be so much fear. It's not just the students, it's the community. I've heard from parents and citizens who didn't know what was going on. Um, so I wanna share, uh, we have a community mental health resource that is open 24-7. Um, it's a crisis services department, 517-346-8200. Uh, and I also want to share in, in the incredible job that was done by our law enforcement, um, LPD, ELPD, uh, state police, Ingham County, and of course, MSU. Um, this is what they trained for. And today and yesterday, they were able to show that, that they are prepared. It's not something you ever want to do when you train, but they were prepared and, and uh, they were excellent. As of today, uh, East Lansing Hannah Center will be available to students uh, in need of resources and counseling will be uh, available all day. Uh, we'll be working with the Department of Health Services uh, today as well to extend other additional things to the community. I uh, just wanna say, as mayor of East Lansing, um, I, when I introduce myself, I'm the mayor of East Lansing, home of Michigan State University. We're indivisible. This Spartan will thing is real. I want to send out uh, my deepest regrets and remorse to the families that lost children, uh, the fear stricken in the children uh, at Michigan State for my children. I am a dad here in this community is like a playground for them. It's where you go and have your first experiences and taste of college life and fun and all those types of things. And I, I'm just shattered today. Um, uh, my heart aches for our community and it will be present. We'll be here in support. President Woodruff, uh, the entire community of Michigan State University will stand hand in hand. Uh, and this is just the beginning. We will find a way forward. Um, I don't want to stand up here and, and try to communicate uh, that we have the answers at this point. But uh, as uh, Congressperson Slotkin said, we're going to find the answers. And we're going to figure some stuff out here. This is going far enough. Thank you. medicine physicians and trauma surgeons were, were waiting for them on their arrival. I will uh, give a lot of thanks to the individuals and first responders on the scene. Uh, our ability to care for these individuals starts uh, in the field. Uh, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, for those individuals did require uh, surgical intervention to treat for their treat their injuries. Uh, one individual uh, did not was taken to uh, the critical care unit um, after being triaged in the emergency department. Uh, all five individuals remained uh, in critical condition this morning. Um, I, just, I want to thank the overwhelming uh, response. 
comes from our, our team, um, everyone uh, in our level one trauma center. This is you know, something we talked about this morning that we uh, that we practice for um, very often, but never want to have to do. Um, and we uh, we did it amazingly well. And, very proud of everyone. Um, the, uh, the team was led by our uh, emergency department of physicians again with our, our trauma surgeons, but uh, can't uh, forget we had uh, general surgeons, uh, cardiothoracic surgeons, neurosurgeons. Received a lot of texts that were just, uh, you know, I'm on my way. Just with them, people showing up where you need me. Uh, it was, it was, it was a sad but uh, very proud of all of us here. So I, uh, I can't speak to anything about uh, the identity of the individuals, but uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, some time for questions afterwards. But uh, again, everyone is um, in critical condition at this time. But. Um, Good morning, my name is Teresa Lickup and I serve as the interim president. And our Spartan hearts are broken. We're grieving, but as a community, we're grieving together. We struggle to comprehend. We lost families, friends, classmates, and our hearts go out to the victims and families of this senseless tragedy. And we offer it to each of them peace that passive understanding. We continue to thank for our medical professionals at Sparrow, and we know that they are taking the best care possible of our students. To our students, we have available to you the support that you need at the Hannah Community Center, as was mentioned by, by Mayor Bacon. This includes counseling and psychological services, as well as employee assistance programs for our faculty and staff. We're deeply appreciative to the governor for reaching out directly to President Biden and for the offer of additional mental health services for our community. As a university, we also thank our law enforcement colleagues, both here and in multiple jurisdictions, who responded immediately and continue to protect our community today and each day. I want to thank the staff who are on campus today. MSU is a modified operations, which means we're an essential personnel only for today and for tomorrow. And those staff who are here to support our 17,000 students who are on campus and our 50,000 students uh, across this great university, we thank you. I also thank directly our students, faculty, and staff who complied with the request to shelter in place for hours at end without knowing exactly what was happening. We thank you for your courage to maintain that shelter, which allowed our law enforcement to take the actions that they did. We ask each of you to honor your feelings and to take care of yourself and each other. And together, we will come back more resilient than ever and more ready to face what is needed in this society, which is the courage of all of us to ensure that this never happened again. Good morning, I'm Marlon Lynch, Vice President for Public Safety and Chief of Police here at Michigan State University. You've heard by several people in regards to the response, the first responders last night. Their work continued through the night, processing crime scenes, obtaining additional statements, additional evidence, tireless work hours. We're not only bound by our duty, but a large percentage of us are invested in our community. We went to school here, we have children here, 
We have family. This is us. This is part of us. These partnerships are great. Our processes will continue with this. We will continuously be joined by our, our partners as we are here today, the FBI, the State Police, as well as Lansing Police Department in East Lansing. And I hate to even go down the list because there's so many agencies that responded last night, continuously responding and asking how can they help. And it was all in a timely manner, very timely with that. You will hear a recap of the incident and as well as some updates uh, based on events that have occurred overnight in regards to um, our students that were involved and also the suspects. Chief Chris Rosman with the Michigan State University Police and Public Safety. As you can tell, this has been a long night for a lot of us. Uh, we have been committed from the beginning to being as transparent and getting as much information out as, po as possible. And we're going to continue to do that throughout the day and as this investigation moves forward. I'm going to start with a brief recap of the incident yesterday. This tragic situation unfolded shortly before 8.30 p.m. Uh, the first call that we received was from Berkey Hall. Berkey Hall is an academic building on our northern campus that borders downtown East Lansing. Initial calls reported shots fired in that building and there was a absolutely overwhelming police response to that initial call. We had officers in that building within minutes. And in that building, they encountered several students who were injured. We can confirm that two of the deceased were in Berkey Hall, along with several of the victims. While the officers were managing that scene at Berkey Hall, we began receiving additional reports of another shooting at the MSU Union Building, just to the west of Berkey Hall, right on the corner of Abbott and Grand River. Officers redeployed to that location where we did locate one additional victim. We do have three total deceased and five uh, victims at the hospital we can confirm that all three deceased were MSU students. We can also confirm at this time that all five of the injured victims at the hospital were also MSU students. We will release the names of those students later today. Once we work through some notifications and make sure that the family's aware that we're gonna release those names. The suspect in this case was located at approximately 11.35 p.m. in the city of Lansing. The suspect was located by units that were assisting and looking for that suspect after the shootings. The suspect is deceased due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And we are prepared to release the name of the person who committed these homicides at this time. We have previously confirmed that he was 43 years old. He's a male. His name is Anthony. Last name is McRae, M-C-R-A-E. Anthony Dwayne McRae is a 43-year-old male. We would like to sincerely thank our community for their help. Because of our quick release of the, photo, the photograph from the campus security cameras and the help from our community, it was a caller's tip that led law enforcement to that suspect in the city of Lansing. We cannot thank the public and the community and the person who called in that report enough for being observant, for following our messaging, and for, for being vigilant and 
contacting us immediately. We will continue to share resources for the MSU community through our institutional website and our MSU police and public safety social media pages. We know that this news may be difficult for those within our campus community and beyond. And it's important to remember that some, it's important to remember that the grief that some individuals may be experiencing is normal. And there are a number of ways in which individuals can seek support, including talking with friends, family, and colleagues to process this, and taking advantage of many of the resources that we have provided. We are prepared at this point to take some questions. Sure. Sure. I'm going to turn it over to Special Agent in Charge, uh, Jim Tarasco. Tarasco. Good morning. I'm Jim Tarasco, Special Agent in Charge of the FBI in Michigan. First of all, our hearts go out to all the victims, the families, the students, in the community. This happens much too often. I'd like to thank all our partners in law enforcement. Chief, once again, thanks for your, your leadership. Uh, just great examples of leadership last night from all the agencies that, that uh, showed up short notice and showed selfless sacrifice to attempt to identify, find the subject, and eliminate the threat. Last night when this occurred, many agencies uh, arrived on scene, the FBI deployed agents, analysts, and specialty teams to help in the effort to help the victims and to also find the individual responsible, <clears throat> which occurred, thanks to law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement here in Michigan is, is the best I've seen in my 30 years in law enforcement. And um, I was very proud of our community in law enforcement and the community at large to come together to uh, resolve this issue, this matter. And we'll continue working in the future hand in hand to mitigate these threats, to try to make Michigan as safe a place as we can for our families. Thank you. So I think we are prepared to take some questions now. Again, I do have to reiterate this is still fluid, it's still ongoing. There are still crime scenes that are being processed and we still are in the process of putting together the pieces to try to solve, to try to understand what happened and why it may have happened. So we're still working through that. So we will go ahead and take some questions. So we're, we're seven, can you discuss at all potential? Thank you. There, there was a large police presence on a home on Creston Avenue and East Howe Avenue in Lansing. Was that the suspect's home? So I can't confirm the actual location or address. Okay. Uh, I, we are aware that there was a search warrant executed on a residence that was connected to the suspect in this case. We're not prepared to share that specific location at this point. Do you have any information on the firearm and whether it was uh, registered to the individual who was suspected of using it? So at this point, we have no additional information on the actual weapon that was used in the incident. Those are things that we will continue to process and look at today as part of our investigation. Did you recover the weapon? We did recover, the, uh, we did recover a weapon, yes. So okay. seven of the eight victims are at Berkey Hall. The eighth is at the Union, and the Union victim also was one that passed away. Is that correct? There were two. Um, two of the victims uh, from Berkey Hall are deceased. One victim from the Union is deceased. There are five additional victims uh, that are at Sparrow Hospital. I cannot confirm where all five of those uh, victims, which building they were in. Um, I, I believe most of them were from Berkey Hall, but I can't confirm that. Okay. Is, I'm gonna go right there. Yes? I understand the first, uh, you said officers arrived uh, shortly after the 83 call, but in the second building, uh, what, can you describe the timetable of what it took to get the MSU team because officers were already within distance of where this happened? Yeah, the MSU union is within very close proximity to Berkey Hall. It's within walking distance. I would describe it as uh, less than a block to the west of Berkey Hall. Uh, all indications at this point, uh, 
point to the, the fact that the suspect exited Berkey Hall and walked over to the CMSU union. Um, when those calls initially started coming in from the union, we were able to quickly redeploy resources to the union and the suspect actually quickly fled that, that building. He was not in the building for that long. So when you say redeploy, how much of a time do you lose between that? I, I can't get into specifics on the time frame right now, but that will be part of the investigation that we'll look at is the, the time between those two uh, incidents right there. Has the suspect had any previous interaction with law enforcement? So that's part of our investigation today is to look at the, the suspect, his background, his history. Uh, those are things that are occurring with our state and federal partners right now who have really taken the lead on uh, helping us with the identify the suspect, uh, especially since that incident did occur off campus. Uh, but those are things that we're looking at today and those will be uh, integral to the investigation in the back end. Deputy Chief, can you shed any light as to the why, why this happened, what his motive was, why he chose Michigan State? You know, we had the same question last night and we have the same answer this morning. We have absolutely uh, no idea what the motive was at this point. We can confirm that the 43-year-old suspect had no affiliation to the university. He was not a student, faculty, staff, um, current or previous. So that that's a, an unknown right now, and that's what we're trying to understand is, is why this incident occurred. I know everybody wants to know what the motive is. Uh, we, we don't have an answer right now, and, and that's, that's the honest truth. Was anything found outside of his home that might help with that? I can't comment on what was located in the residence as part of that search warrant, but that is part of the ongoing investigation. Right there. Uh, last week, several schools in Okemos and other schools across uh, the state were shut down for an active shooting, which was determined to be a hoax. Have you determined if there's any connection to that at this point? So I, I won't get, get into that in detail. Obviously, we're looking at the possibility of, of any connection. There doesn't, what I will say is there doesn't appear to be initially. Uh, but those are the type of things that our state and federal partners are really going to look at. Um, but initially, it does not appear that there's, there's any connection in the back right there. Blue, mm -hmm. um, I understand that police made contact with the suspect before he shot himself. Can you explain what that contact was and what was the time frame? So I don't have any additional information on um, the sequence of events when law enforcement contacted the suspect. Um, there was a tip called in from a alert citizen that reported the suspect. Uh, that call was dispatched to uh, resources that we had deployed in the field. Um, we had so many police officers on campus as part of our unified command structure, we started deploying resources off campus in order to respond to reports just like this and the responding officers encountered the suspect. Um, and I can't comment more on that actual interaction that is being investigated by the Michigan State Police right now. Does Mr. McCray live in this community uh, first and then possibly for the medical uh, personnel here? Can you tell us anything more about the extent of the injuries of, of the thigh? I'll start with that and I'll turn, turn it over to the doc. Um, we're not gonna, we're still working to ascertain uh, place of residence for the suspect. Uh, as we have said all along, we want to make sure any information that we share is accurate, and we are still working to determine um, place of uh, hometown and residence for the suspect. Yeah. There wasn't a um, consistent injury pattern um, with the individuals who were brought to the hospital, but the initial reports last evening that the, that the injuries were life-threatening was, um, was correct, um, but there wasn't a, a consistent nature. There was a variety of um, uh, injuries associated with the gunshots. Were there, were there any other weapons recovered uh, on the suspect or around the suspect after he took his own life and weapons and or ammunition? So again, I can't comment on that specifically. That will be part of the investigation. That scene that occurred is being investigated by the Michigan State Police. Um, and I can't comment on what evidence was recovered at that specific scene. But you did say that you recovered one, one weapon. We do have at least one weapon, yes. Used in the incident on campus? That's part of the investigation, and we'll work to determine that. We'll take one more question. I had, if I may, I had 
to uh, just welcome to slide in. In regard to the timing of the tip, roughly you came out at around 11 o'clock shortly thereafter with the first news briefing and released the picture. Suspect was encountered before midnight, so this tip came within minutes of you guys releasing this photo, or can you clarify? Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely correct. Uh, as soon as, during this incident, when it was ongoing, and you can imagine the number of moving pieces, we had MSU police and public safety investigators uh, reviewing surveillance footage, and they quickly uh, determined that we had a picture of the suspect, and we quickly disseminated that um, publicly. And you are correct, it was shortly after we released it that he was recognized by an alert citizen. Um, and so the, the time frame was pretty quick after we released it. So we, we commend the, the community and the citizen that called that in. Uh, and that was exactly what we were trying to achieve by releasing that picture was to generate immediate tips uh, for this person that uh, was mobile that we had no idea where he was at that point. And if I may, did any of the victims or anybody that might have been in proximity say if the suspect said anything or just came in shooting or can you clarify at all how it transpired? So that will be part of the investigation in terms of what the suspect did or said. Um, there's, there, are count, there are numerous witnesses uh, that we have interviewed and we will start to put those pieces together and see um, but I, I don't have that information right now in terms of what the suspect said to anything when, when he committed these heinous crimes. Thank you. In the back, that's what How long will resources be provided to students on top of, will there be any extensions on school delays and in school activities? We'll, we will provide the resources the students need for the time period they, they need. And again, we thank the federal government for uh, their response. We will be in modified operations for the next two days, and then we will move into a period where camp classes will be canceled until Monday morning, but uh, campus uh, operations will resume. Thank you. Yes, the medical staff, one other question. Uh, well, we, understand that the, we understand that the uh, patients are still in critical condition. Can you tell us what their prognosis is for recovery? Um, what, uh, it's still very early on because this is, um, the injuries occurred just over 12 hours ago, so uh, um, their conditions are evolving. I can say that they're all absolutely in a critical condition, um, but there's there's varying degrees of that, but I think it's just too early. It's too early on in their course to, um, to give any kind of you know, prognosis at this point. Any breakdown in the number of male and female victims that you can provide for us? No, not, not So, appreciate everybody coming this morning. We are gonna to continue to share information. Um, that concludes this briefing. Uh, we will be here today and working around the clock uh, to provide resources and to continue this investigation and we will continue to provide information, but thank you. Thanks for letting me share your chair.